Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm here with Lori Langdon, an old friend of mine who is also a young adult author, a really gifted young adult author. So, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks. you for coming. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. Um, so it usually takes, oh, 30 seconds or so before people start uh, leaving comments and things, but I usually have them kind of sound off who's here. So if you're here with us, leave us a comment so we know who we're chatting with, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, Sounds good. Lori, how's your, how's your family doing with the, uh, the big quarantine? Well, I have two sons, and they're 17 and 19. The 19-year-old is an extrovert. So oh, no. he, and he's super active, like always on the go. So uh -huh. right now he's at his friend's lake fishing. And so oh. I've approved that. I'm like, uh -huh. okay, you're allowed to fish as long as you don't go in his house and like <laughs> go around go his family. Like, yeah, because yeah. he has, you know, like more people in the house. And then my younger son, he's a introvert and he just, he's loving it. Like he's on his video games, talking to his friends. <laughs> he's, he's having a good time. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Yeah, my oldest daughter came home from college, and I think it's been it's been perfect for her. She's like, oh, I'm home. I'm getting good food. Just go yeah. to my room and do my work. Right. <laughs> I don't so, mind it. I'm an introvert too, so I mean, okay. I can be extroverted when I need to be. But in general, I like kind of staying home and writing and reading and cooking, and so it's not too bad. Of course, I get a little. A little antsy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, look, the scales are back with us. So the scales family oh, is with hi. me most days. Uh, so this is the whole family watching. They cool. ditched me yesterday for another author, author's live cast. Can you believe that? <laughs> so rough. There's a weekly. Uh, there's a weekly Thursday writing thing they're going to, which sounds really cool actually, but it happens to be at the exact same time as ours. Oh, I have um, to check that out. They won. Last week, we had a guy named David Levine who wrote a series called Arabella of Mars. They mm -hmm. won the copy uh, last oh. week. We're going to do that again this week, actually, with a copy of your book. So Yay. if you're watching this, every like, every share, every comment on Facebook or YouTube or wherever uh, will get you an entry. And on Monday, I'll uh, use a number generator to pick a random number of one of those, and one of you will get a free copy of Lori's book. Um, That's awesome. So, Lori, why don't we uh, why don't we start with uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background as a writer, how you got into publishing, yeah. and, and that. Whole well, story. I have six young adult published books right now. Amazing. And the first series was called Dune, D O O N, yeah. not D U N E. Right, and, like Brigadoon. Yeah, yeah, it's a reimagining of the Scottish musical Brigadoon. And I actually had a co-author on that series uh -huh. and it's four books. So they came out a year apart starting in 2013. And then my first solo book was Guilt Hollow. And that was kind of like a murder mystery for young adults. That's exciting. And yeah. And Olivia Twist is my most recent that came out in 2018. And so those are the, the books that I've actually had published. Of course, I've written a lot more than that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> had you written we, several books before you were published? Uh, I completed one book before I was published, and it was a revolutionary war time travel book um, that was also spiritual. Like it also had a Christian bent to it. And when I sent that out to agents, they're like, there is no room in Christian fiction for time travel. Like, <laughs> oh, what? Why? Is it so like it was, a, yeah, it was a no go. <laughs> tra time travel is not Christian or something? I guess. I back, and this was Ooh. many years ago. So I may need to dig that out and see if there's <laughs> a place for it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds great. I'd read that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've had a couple other people showing up. So we have the Sims family are here. So Hello. they're in Texas. They put us on their television. So we're probably oh, as large as in real life there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and then looks like we have uh, some fans in Pennsylvania there. So that's exciting. Hello. I was on the phone for like an hour with someone in Pennsylvania today. Wow. So Yeah. Very entertaining. Okay. So you have six published books, a seventh time travel novel, which has broken all the rules of Christian fiction. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> how did, uh, how did, oh, we got, we have some, one more. Okay. So this is Beth. Her, her actual name is, is Dr. Awesome. 
Um, and she says she is down for Christian time travel. She's ready. I know, right? I mean, really, time is no obstacle to the one who created it, right? Yeah. That was my theory. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So I think Perfect. that's pretty solid. <laughs> is this okay? So okay, I hate to go into questions about an unpublished work. That's okay. But who is doing the time traveling in that novel? It is a girl, a woman. This is actually an adult novel, and she's oh. in her twenties. Um, she's in an abusive relationship, uh -huh. and she ends up kind of calling out to God for help, and a storm sweeps in, and then she's kind of thrown into the ocean. She's on a yacht at the time. Um, and the storm takes her back to the 1700s and she's picked up by a, um, I wouldn't call it a pirate. Uh, I think that the, they were working for the Americans. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's, it, it's more of an adventure and it was also kind of inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean. I was obsessed with that, like at the oh. time. And I loved the whole romanticism adventure of that. And so a lot of it is set on the ocean, which is fun. It's fun to write. It sounds like, like it, even as you were describing it, I'm like, well, that sounds like a Hallmark movie to me. Like, yeah. Why, hey. <laughs> why would they not? Yeah. And look, you have fans already for a book that isn't even published. Look at this. Time travel is one of my See? favorite genres. Uh, oh, and my friend April says, hello. Hi, April. Hi, April. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't, I don't want to get too focused on a book that is not accessible to anyone. Um, can we talk a little bit about Olivia Twist? Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I can tell you kind of the basic uh -oh, gist. More people voting for your time travel book. Oh my gosh, I really <laughs> need, need to, need to do show something this about that. Publishers. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly will. Maybe I'll self-publish it. Who knows? Oh, hey, there you go. So Olivia Twist kind of supposes, and there she is, the I got beautiful my cover. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Lori did this really fun thing when this book came out that you could uh, pu print these uh, little, what was like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. You could print yeah. out and go put it in the books at Target. So I went and yeah. put one in a tar book at Target and then bought one for myself while I was there. Yeah, and I asked people to post a picture on social media of themselves like with the book at Target. And it really, it was nice to get the word out. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I was so proud like to have a book in Target. It didn't last long, of course. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's the market at Target, but it's yeah, exciting it was there. They're cyclical for sure. I mean, unless you're Harry Potter. So I think right. their YA shelves are so limited. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a story that is, it's been in my, in my imagination since I was very small. Really? And it kind of supposes that Oliver Twist was born a girl. Uh -huh. And she, when she's rescued from the streets by her family, she's raised and turned into kind of a lady of high society. And she has an unexpected reunion with a boy from her past who is the Artful Dodger. Mm -hmm. And he kind of lures her back into that life on the streets that she tried so hard to leave behind. So it's got a lot of adventure, action, romance. Um, it is set in Victorian England, so it's historical. That's what one of the things I love about this book is it it messes with if you're familiar with the Oliver Twist story, it messes with some of your expectations, which was really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it is the fact that it's an adventure and a romance. Like you're juggling a lot of things, and you do it super super well. It's just a really fun book. Thank you. Thank you. I had fun writing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that the one misconception people have is that if they've never read Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, then they won't be able to understand this one. But oh, I did yeah. set it up so that you don't have to know the original story, you know, and there's the little flashbacks and things um, from that original book and musical. So I was inspired by the musical Oliver which oh, was um, oh. 1968, I believe. Um, okay. It was a movie and it won 11 Academy Awards at the time. Amazing. I saw it um, in a re-release when I was probably seven or eight years old at the theater. And I just became obsessed like with these characters. Like I thought this is the most incredible thing ever. And I got like the album, it was like a double album soundtrack. And I would sit in my room and listen to the music and I would make up stories about these characters. And 
for some reason, the boy who plays <laughs> Oliver looked like a girl to me. And since uh, I was I was like seven, I kind of thought that was a girl. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you literally have been thinking about this story since you were like, when you say a long yeah, time. Seven. Like you yeah, seven. Wow, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I, I have always been a romantic. So even when I was making up those stories, it was like, Olivia Oliver and the Artful Dodger had a little romance going and had mysteries to solve. So yeah, <laughs> kind of like fan fiction, right? I mean, that's exactly what it is, right? That's amazing. Hey, look, you you have a fan here. Look, I actually borrowed Olivia Twist from the school library where I work on the day we found out we wouldn't be going back and planning oh. on rereading soon. One of my favorites. Oh, thank you so much. I love hearing that. I'm glad you got stuck with it in the quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that it's not on a shelf stuck somewhere where no one can get it for sure. That's right. And probably no fees right now, which is good. No late fees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my dog, my 10 year old yesterday goes, hey, dad, uh, I've got a $20 fee for library book. And I was like, that's ridiculous. I, how can they do that to us at this time? She's like, oh, no, this is from last school year. And I was like, oh. Oh, well, no. in that case, that, that case, we might as well just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just buy that book. <laughs> well, I think that's what it is, right? She can return yeah. the book and then we won't owe $20. That's uh, right. Well, and I wanted to say, I, I did read the Dickens book um, when I was older. So as a teen, I kind of got obsessed mm -hmm. with historical fiction and read everything I could get my hands on, including Oliver Twist. And I discovered two interesting things. So the movie... Mm -hmm. is kind of showing the Artful Dodger as a morally ambiguous, but kind of good character. He's not so good in the book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and the other thing is there is a villain in the story of Oliver Twist that's not even in the movie. And it is Monks is his name. And mm -hmm. I put him in my book. So okay. I actually incorporated that villain that wasn't in the musical at all. So I think that it's interesting that they didn't have the, a villain, but they made Bill Sykes the villain. Hmm. Um, in the movie, if you've ever seen it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. So it's fun that you get to go in and sort of remix your favorite things and, uh, tell the story in a different way. Yeah. Uh, April says, thanks, Lori. I need something new to read and it sounds fun. Oh, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. That's great. Uh, it is available by the way, anywhere you buy books, you should be able to find yeah. this one. Uh, yeah. And I do want to throw something out there right now. Um, the publishing industry is struggling just like so many other industries and uh, brick and mortar bookstores were kind of struggling before the, this hit before yeah. COVID-19 and Barnes and Noble in particular. Mm -hmm. So if you want to order books, try to order them from Barnes and Noble. Um, a lot of them are doing curbside pickup. If you don't want to wait for them to be delivered via mail. Um, and I just ordered a couple books myself. Um, normally I download eBooks like, or go to the library or actually go to the bookstore. But since I can't right now, I want to do my part. And I think if you want to send a gift to someone, like that's a great idea to go through Barnes and Noble. Yeah, for sure. Our, our local Barnes and Noble here in town is doing the, the yeah, delivery out to your car thing. Yeah. Which yeah. Is really interesting. Great. I'd like them to do that all the time. I just drive by and grab my, right. <laughs> It's Maybe they will. No, they this. might. I assume a lot of things <laughs> are probably going to change. Yeah. Uh, well, folks, what questions do you have for Lori? They can be about her books, uh, about writing in general, about young adult fiction, really what whatever yeah. you like. I'm sure Lori would be glad to talk about. Definitely. Just send us a question. I, I definitely will. And while we're waiting, Matt, how is your writing going right now? Oh man, I, uh, yesterday I hit my word count. Like I try to do a certain amount every day. Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. But it's my first time, second time in three weeks that I actually hit oh, my gosh. count. So distracted yeah. with everyone in the house and then yeah. the emotional ups and downs, not just of the family, but of myself. Uh, and then just things that it's like, if I'm going to live here, I have to change this thing at our house, whether it's cleaning the kitchen or mowing yeah. the lawn or something. Right. Uh, it's just, I'm just distracted and I feel weird a lot of days. And yeah. And there's other people who need stuff in the family. And I sure get caught up in that. And I write in public spaces. I don't have like an office area as mm. such in my house. Yeah. Uh, so that's part of it too. But how, yeah. how is it for you writing 
at this time? The first week, um, I couldn't write. Like I was just kind mm-hmm. of shut down. Like I, I was too anxious, stressed. Like the news was like top of mind. Um, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to set my daily word count and I'm going to set it low. <laughs> <laughs> so I started out like just 200 words a day. Like oh, this is my smart. accomplishment. <laughs> smart. And yeah, so I've been building up and today I wrote over a thousand, which was wonderful. That's um, that felt really good because I'm not a super fast writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to rework sentences over and over again, kind of trying to get them perfect. I tried not to <laughs> because right. I want to go back later and fix it. I think it's better sometimes if you just flow through the writing. Um, but I tend to, to go back and kind of tweak things as I write. So a thousand words is good for me. I can go higher, but right now, I think that's going to be the max with everybody home. I have an office, but it's my dining room. Like I turned oh. our dining room into my office. Like it's, <laughs> it's got all my furniture. It doesn't look like a dining room anymore, <laughs> but there's no privacy. Like it's open right. to the rest of the house. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah. I, uh, what I do is when I'm under contract for a book, I look at how many words I think ballpark it'll be. And then I yeah. split it up day by day going out. So when yeah. I fall behind, I'm like, actually, behind Mm -hmm. Uh, so then I'm like okay so every day I'm missing that's another day that I'm gonna have to write even more oh gosh it's getting a little yeah stressful so are you Uh, on deadline then I am yeah my book is due June 1st it's the third in the sunlight lands um wow so so it's gonna be a decent sized book yeah Uh, but yesterday I had a really good writing day I wrote a whole chapter and uh, I was like, ah, oh, it's amazing. It felt so good that I was like, yeah. okay, I can do this some more. Yeah. Um, so well, like, one... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Did you have a question? Oh, no. There, uh, we have a couple in the comments queue, but say what okay. you were going to say and then we'll I was going to say one thing that I do with word count goals is I set a goal for the week, actually. So oh, I yeah. divide it up by day, but ultimately mm-hmm. it's that I want to reach this, this number by Saturday and hopefully take the weekend off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. my reward. But then that way, if I don't, if I have a slow day and then I can make up the next day to reach my final goal. So that, that can be helpful. Much identically what I do also. Wow. It's, that's interesting. I found that, that most people don't do that. That's pretty cool. Well, what I discovered was if I set aside So some writers set aside a time every day, right? Like an hour or two hours a day. If Mm -hmm. I do that, my brain just shuts off for that entire time. It's so (laughs) easy. And I end up like researching on the internet, which means, you know, hanging out on Facebook is what it means. (laughs) And then I wake up and I'm like, oh no, my two hours are gone. Yeah, I I totally get that. Yeah. So I started putting a word count limit. And then it was like, well, if that takes you 30 minutes, fine. If it takes you two hours, fine. You're just going to find a way to do it. That's right. Uh, Okay, good. We've got a a bunch of questions here. So here's here's the first. Scales Family wants to know, what are your age recommendations for your book? Books? Let's talk about all of them. Okay. And then also, which character is most like you in your books? Uh, I would say 12 and up. For most of my books, I think that they're PG-13 would be how I would rate them. And they don't have excessive violence or cussing. Um, There's kissing. That's about it. Oh, is somebody there? That was my daughter, Allie. She was just sticking her head in (laughs) to say hi. And now she's off to get our rabbit. So the public space, you know. Yeah. And who am I most like? Um, Hmm. I think it's probably Olivia from Olivia Twist. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I I tend to. You were disguised uh, as a boy as a child. Yeah, I was disguised as a boy growing up. No, uh, she finds she find way finds ways to do things that she wants to do, um, even if it means breaking the rules. And I'm kind of like that. Like I'm gonna find a way to accomplish my goals and. Like nothing's really going to stop me. (laughs) That's awesome. So, but she is very also um, giving and caring and she inspires me uh, to want to be a better person. Oh, that's really great. Uh, Now we already know that you liked Oliver when you were young, but what were some Mm -hmm. of your favorite books when you were growing up? Uh, A favorite was The Outsiders uh, by S.E. Hinton. I read that 
gosh, I can't even tell you how many times. Um, and then when I was younger, Beverly Cleary, Roald Dahl, um, gosh. there wasn't the YA genre. No, you know that's that. True. Yeah. It's it like we didn't have that. That we had like Sweet Valley High romances for the girls. <laughs> And I would read a few of those and they were so formulaic that after right. I read one or two, I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think were, I could do it again. There are books out there, right? That had young adult protagonists, but they weren't, it wasn't yeah. like today where it was an industry for sure. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. Okay. Here's, here's an interesting question. Uh, Lori, have you ever had some epiphany as a writer that significantly changed your writing? Oh, Wow. That's a good question. Let me think about this for a second. Okay. An epiphany that has changed my writing. I think the biggest epiphany that I've had is that I, throughout my writing career, have struggled with insecurity. Oh. And yeah, I think especially at first, I just felt as if it was almost like I fell into this. Like, I didn't feel like I was talented. I felt like, mm -hmm. oh, this just happened to me. How did this happen? You know, like this, it was, it was a blessing, but I didn't know, like, like this was me, you know, and then I would try to write another book and I would start over again. Like, I would feel like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Oh my gosh, I'm not good enough writer. I'm not as good as XYZ author who I just read, mm -hmm. you know, when you would read some of the best selling YA authors and it gives me a little bit of, um, imposter syndrome, I call it. <laughs> uh -huh. So I feel like I'm kind of an imposter, but, um, I think probably when around the time that Olivia twist came out and I started realizing that every writer is different and every writer has different strengths and talents. And I may be good at certain things as a writer. I'm I'm actually really good at description. I'm good at uh, characterization and romance, um, mm -hmm. action, but I'm not going to be good at everything. And right. every book I read isn't good at everything either. And so I just have to focus on what I'm good at, what I enjoy writing, and really focusing on the writing itself and in the enjoyment of that and getting that back and not worrying about what everyone's going to think what the critics are going to think what my agent's going to think if the publishers are going to pick the book up i just have to write what i love and so yeah. that really did change change me a lot i think it's really uh interesting and encouraging i hear from uh young writers all the time that have that imposter syndrome i could never do it i can't do this i yeah. personally find it really encouraging when i'm like here's this really gifted woman who has mm -hmm. six young adult novels out and more books on the way who yeah. still feels that way uh, yeah. at times. It, it, it's at a times. good reminder that, uh, yeah, that the way we feel about our work doesn't necessarily reflect the reality of our work. That is at so times. true. That is yeah. really true. And I wonder about you, Matt. It's like you started out nonfiction. Did you kind <laughs> of feel that when you started to write fiction? <laughs> you know what's funny is that uh, I have always lean toward fiction. Like I'd rather mm -hmm. do fiction than nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, so my first book, Imaginary Jesus, right, was uh, I had pitched it as nonfiction, uh, mm -hmm. sort of a funny series of essays. And the guy who became my agent, Wes, read it and said, like, do you like this kind of book? And I said, no, no, I love, I love novels. And he said, well, try writing something you would like. And I was like, yeah. well, it's going to be weird. Uh, and it was, right? Um, and then, yeah, I started doing nonfiction also, but that was like a weird fiction, nonfiction thing. M mixture. Yeah, that's I've true. I've always that's true. wanted to write fiction. That's, that's yeah. what I love. And you're um, so good at it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Lori gave an amazing endorsement to the Crescent Stone. Uh, it was deserved. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually prefer fiction. Overall, yeah. like it, I like being in that that world where you're kind of meeting yeah. new people almost. Right. Um, and when you get those characters that start running away and doing things different than what you as the that's the best. Intended, yeah. yeah, I'm so happy. Then it just feels yeah, like me too. A world, and I want to check in with them to see what they're going to be doing or saying. Oh uh, yeah, I get worried about them. You know, I actually. <laughs> 
so funny. I woke up this morning, you know, I've been writing every day and I don't know if it's the same for you, but when I'm writing a lot, I actually have more ideas rather than less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I woke up and I wasn't completely awake and I just was like working in my head yeah. on this book that I'm not actually currently writing. Oh my uh, gosh. And I woke up and I was like, ah, oh, why, why was I wasting all this dream brain <laughs> power on this book? I'm not even writing right now. Oh my Ooh. gosh. I had a whole dream. That was a novel. I woke up <laughs> and this was like three days ago and I wrote, <laughs> I wrote notes down and it's science fiction. Oh really? I've never written science fiction. I don't even love reading science fiction. <laughs> but this idea just like came like this dream. It was so intense. Like I had to write it down. Wow. So maybe someday, maybe so I will write Time it. Travel. Time travel. Yeah. Science fiction. <laughs> That's a little science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I uh, I had a really bad fever once when I was sick. And I wrote down all my ideas I had when I had the fever. And while I was sick, I was like, this is amazing. This is going to be the thing. <laughs> and uh, when I was well, I went back and read it. And I was like, I don't even, what is this? I don't understand. <laughs> I, was in, I was like, out of my head. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. So, uh, Lori, I don't want to keep you all day. I know you you have a, a word count to hit. Um <laughs> So thankful that you would come by. If there's any last questions, you can jump in with them. Be sure to visit Lori's website at lorilangdon.com. You can see it there on the screen. She's also on Instagram at instagram.com slash author Lori Langdon. Uh, and the mm -hmm. same on Facebook, facebook.com slash yeah. author Lori Langdon. Uh, and she does yeah. a lot of fun things at both those places. Um, Lori, uh, uh, what, if anything, are you able to tell us about what you're working on right now? I do have a top secret project Ooh. and I, I think it combines all of my loves, which is really cool. It's historical with fantasy oh. and I've never written a historical fantasy before. And it also involves kind of reimagining some very well-known characters. So that's all I can really say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Teasing us. Tell you what, when you're able to announce what you're working on. Why don't you come back and we'll yeah. uh, fill in, fill everybody in. Oh, we got one more comment. This one's about Guild Hollow. Just want to say oh. Guild Hollow is amazing and everyone should read it. Oh, oh. thank you, Jenna. Oh, Jenna. I appreciate that. I, you know, Guild Hollow, I just have to throw this out there. Mm -hmm. It is, it's the book that so many people tell me it, it's like my favorite book or I reread it every October because it's set in the fall. Really? But it didn't sell. <laughs> well, you know like, what's funny? Yeah, I, I've read the Dune books and I've read Olivia Twist, but I haven't read Guild Hollow. So maybe yeah. tell us a little more about it because I obviously well, I need to go get it. It kind of started with this one sentence, which sometimes books do, right? Like, and the main character is Willow Lamont. So Willow Lamont's best friend is a murderer and no oh. one in the small town of Guild Hollow will let her forget it. And that's what oh. started it all. And basically... Ashton, who was the other main character, he is convicted of manslaughter at the age of 14. And the book kind of starts out after he's served his time in juvie and he comes back to his small hometown and he's ready for vengeance. <laughs> wow. And he's also ready to kind of solve this mystery, like what really happened. And so it's full of action and, of course, a little romance. Um, but he and Willow were best friends. So it's like, they've got all this history and that makes it really fun too. Oh man, that sounds great. Yeah. So, well, uh, we'll do this, uh, for everyone who's commenting, liking or sharing, uh, like I said, on Monday, we'll do a drawing to see who won and you can pick any of Lori's books that you like, which I will then purchase for you and either send you or, uh, have the local Barnes and Noble, bring it out to your car, one or the other, you know, whatever you like. So, That's awesome. uh, yeah, uh, Lori, any, uh, any last words for the, for the gang here? I would just say that just like everybody's saying, use this time to be creative, like create things, but don't put pressure on yourself. Don't feel hmm. like, Oh, I've got to learn a new skill. I've got to learn to watercolor or paint a novel or paint a novel, write a novel. <laughs> paint but a novel. I, yeah. Why not? But I do think everybody has like this creativity inside of them. It really, if they can go on the other side of that fear, um, they can find it. And this is a great time to be able to do that. That's amazing. 
Well, thanks so much, Lori. But but uh, if you hang on a second, we can chat for a minute when we when we stop being okay. live. Uh, if you come back Monday, we'll be picking up with chapter nine of the Crescent Stone, and uh, and don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. It helps other people join us here in our little community and also uh, gets you more entrances into a chance to win a free copy of one of Lori's books. So thanks everybody. Uh, it is Good Friday for those who are Christian. Uh, so just remember Easter is on the way. Uh, and I hope that your weekend, uh, whatever your faith, whatever your background, wherever you are, I hope it's a wonderful one filled with reminders of people who you love and who love you. So have a great weekend. Lori, thanks again for joining Bye, us. Bye, everybody. All right, there we go.